Today on Passion for Food, we're going to be making this easy three ingredient strawberry shortbread. And instead of the classic strawberry shortbread style cookie where it just kind of has a pool of strawberry in the middle, I found an amazingly quick and easy way to make these that has the strawberry infused throughout. Let's go ahead and get started. Now, just like the classic shortbread, this is going to be a three ingredient shortbread starting with two cups of all purpose flour. And next up is a little bit of blasphemy, one cup of melted butter. Now I know normally the butter would either be broken down into crumbs with the flour or whipped with the sugar, but trust me, this works. But now here's the real problem. How are we going to get the strawberries in there without ruining the texture of our short crust? Well, what we're going to do is replace the customary half a cup of sugar with a full half a cup of strawberry preserves. You see, if we were just to use the customary half a cup of sugar and then try and add frozen or fresh strawberries, all the moisture released from the strawberries would ruin the texture of our short crust. And nobody likes a crummy short crust. You see, what we have with the preserves is basically just fresh strawberries and sugar boiled until most of the water is evaporated, which is exactly what we need for our shortbread to maintain its texture. And I definitely recommend preserves over jam. In preserves, you've got nice big chunks of fruit. In jam, it's more of a fruit pulp. And that's fine, but you're not going to get those nice chunks of strawberry. And definitely don't use jelly. That's basically just fruit juice. Anyway, sorry to jam things up there. Let's just give this a mix, and it's going to come together into a smooth dough for us surprisingly quickly. It's almost criminal how quickly this strawberry shortbread dough is going to come together for us because we're using that melted butter. Now, if you're worried about the texture being different, well, I've made shortbread multiple times using both methods, and I've never really been able to tell any texture difference in the end. The only difference is this version is going to take slightly longer to chill in the fridge. I did this in real time, so I definitely think we can call that a short mixing time. Next, we just need a little plastic wrap because we're going to form this into a log. Kind of a short log. <laughs> okay, okay, that's the last one, I promise. Maybe. We'll see. Now, the shape we get this isn't hugely important. We just want to kind of keep it even from one end to the other. There are a lot of different traditional shortbread shapes. We could do circles, we could do cylinders, we could do little triangles. This dough is going to be soft and easy to shape at this point, so your best bet is going to be to form it into a rough cylinder and then stash it in the fridge. After about 30 minutes or so, you'll be able to form it more easily into the final shape that you desire. I decided to form mine into a rough rectangle. That way I can cut little wafer cookies for my final strawberry shortbread. If you're in a big hurry and you don't have time for all this chilling business, you can actually just press this dough straight into an 8x8 baking dish and bake for about 30 minutes at 350 degrees. Just make sure you cut it while it's still warm. But while our dough has a chance to chill, let's take just a moment and talk about the history of shortbread. Modern shortbread is derived from a medieval biscuit bread, which was a twice-baked enriched bread roll dusted with sugar, spices, and hardened into a dry, sweetened biscuit called a rusk. Modern shortbread as we think of it today is usually credited to Mary, Queen of Scots in the 16th century, who had a team of French chefs who had the time, labor, and ingredients to perfect the recipes. Which really had me thinking, wow, that Queen Mary... Great Scott. Anyway, now that our dough has had at least two hours to chill, it should be nice and firm. So we'll go ahead and get this unwrapped and then just slice it into about quarter inch pieces. And we should be able to fit one batch comfortably on a single sheet pan. We don't have to space these out much because they shouldn't spread out at all. It is fairly traditional to give them a little decorative poke with a fork, so I'm going to go ahead and do that before we whisk this off to a preheated 350 degree oven, where it's going to cook between 10 and 15 minutes. At which point we'll just pull these out, and one thing that makes shortbread cookies, at least for me, different than other cookies is that I don't really like to eat these warm. I like to let these cool off completely. That buttery, crumbly shortbread texture just isn't right if these are warm. But once they're nice and room temperature, we can go ahead and give these a try. At first, I wasn't sure if substituting all the sugar for strawberry preserves was going to work, but I was thrilled with the results I got from these. That delicate, crumbly shortbread texture was perfect, and biting into those chunks of strawberries really made these lovely. 
I really hope you've enjoyed today's episode. If you have, give me a thumbs up below and don't forget to subscribe and hit that little bell so you don't miss our future recipes. And check out one of the other awesome videos playing on the screen now. This has been Graham with Passion for Food. Next, we just need some... Next, we're gonna... No!